Now, I'm just going to read Sister Lucy's memoirs, the first and third um, appearances, the apparitions of the angel. Um, so I'll read the first and then straight into the third one, and then Father can give his talk after that. So one fine day we set out with our sheep for some land that my parents owned, which lay at the foot of the eastern slope of the hill I had already mentioned. This property was called Cusa Vela. Soon after our arrival, about mid-morning, a fine drizzle began to fall, so fine that it seemed like mist. We went up the hillside, followed by our flocks, looking for an overhanging boulder where we could take shelter. Thus it was, for the first time, that we entered this blessed hollow among the rocks. It stood in the middle of an olive grove, belonging to my godfather, Anastasio. From there you could see the little village where I was born, my parents' home, and the hamlets of Casa Vela and Era da Pedra. The olive grove, owned by several people, extended to within the confines of the hamlets themselves. We spent the day there among the rocks, in spite of the fact that the rain was over and the sun was shining bright and clear. We ate our lunch and said our rosary. I am not sure whether we said it that day in the way I have already described before, saying just the words, Hail Mary and Our Father on each bead. So great was our eagerness to get to our play. Our prayer finished and we started to play a game called Pebbles. We had enjoyed the game for a few moments only when a strong wind began to shake the trees. We looked up startled to see what was happening for the day was unusually calm. Then we saw coming towards us above the olive trees the figure I had already spoken about. Jacinta and Francisco had never seen it before, nor had I ever mentioned it to them. As it, as it drew closer, we were able to distinguish its features. It was a young man about 14 or 15 years old, whiter than snow, transparent as crystal when the sun shines through it, and of great beauty. On reaching us, he said, Do not be afraid. I am the angel of peace. Pray with me. Kneeling on the ground, he bowed down until his forehead touched the ground and made us repeat these words three times. My God, I believe, I adore, I hope, and I love you. I ask pardon of you, for those who do not believe, do not adore, do not hope, and do not love you. Then rising he said, Pray thus, the hearts of Jesus and Mary are attentive to the voice of your supplications. His words engraved themselves so deeply on our minds that we could never forget them. From then onwards, we used to spend long periods of time, prostrate like the angel, repeating his words, until sometimes we fell exhausted. I warned my companions right away that this must be kept secret, and thank God they did what I wanted. Some time passed and summer came, when we had to go home for siesta. One day we were playing on the stone slabs of the well. Oh, sorry, that's the second apparition. So we go on to the third apparition. One day we went to pasture our sheep on a property belonging to my parents, which lay on the slope of the hill I have mentioned, a little higher up than Villinos. It is an olive grove called Pregera, after our lunch, we decided to go and pray in the hollow among the rocks on the opposite side of the hill. To get there, 
we went around the slope and had to climb over some rocks above the pragera. The sheep could only scramble over these rocks with great difficulty. As soon as we arrived there, we knelt down with our foreheads touching the ground and began to repeat the prayer, the prayer of the angel. My God, I believe, I adore, I hope, and I love you. I do not know how many times we had repeated this prayer when an extraordinary light shone upon us. We sprang up to see what was happening and beheld the angel. He was holding a chalice in his left hand with the host suspended above it, from which some drops of blood fell into the chalice. Leaving the chalice suspended in the air, the angel knelt down beside us and made us repeat three times, Most Holy Trinity, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, I offer you the most precious body, blood, soul and divinity of Jesus Christ, present in all the tabernacles of the world, in reparation for the outrages, sacrileges and indifference with which he himself is offended, and through the infinite merits of his most sacred heart and the immaculate heart of Mary, I beg of you the conversion of poor sinners. Then rising, he took the chalice and the host in his hands. He gave the sacred host to me and shared the blood from the chalice between Jacinta and Francisco, saying as he did so, Take and drink the body and blood of Jesus Christ, horribly outraged by ungrateful men. Make reparation for their crimes and console your God. Once again, he prostrated on the ground and repeated with us three times more the same prayer, Most Holy Trinity, and then disappeared. We remained a long time in this position, repeating the same words over and over again. When at last we stood up, we noticed that it was already dark and therefore time to return home. Pope Paul VI called Fatima the compendium of the Gospel, that is the summary of the Gospel. And the, the um, experience of Fatima begins here in 1916 with the apparition of the angel. And what did the angel tell the children? Well, many things, but at the heart of it, at the center of his message, is also the center of our faith. His appearance, first of all, tells us of the existence of angels. Then he speaks about the Blessed Trinity, that great mystery. He speaks about the um, Incarnation. He speaks about uh, the hearts of Jesus and Mary. Within the message, and we include also what Our Lady revealed, we learn about heaven, we learn certainly about hell, we learn about purgatory, we learn about the gravity, the seriousness of sin. We also hear about reparation, the need to make sacrifices, we learn, in fact, everything of our faith. It's all contained in this great apparition, this mystery that we call Fatima. We also learn about the desperate times in which we live. The, at this spot, the angel asked the children to pray. And the, the first prayer was that of the, the, the need for reparation. And the fact that we were created by God, that we are to love Him and to serve Him, and that we, the reward we receive is to be with Him forever. But we also cannot go to heaven alone. We are asked to bring others with us. And so he says, 
my God, I believe, I adore, I trust, I love you. I beg pardon for those who do not believe, do not adore, do not trust, do not love you. So in a certain way, we're apologizing for those who do not have the gift of faith that we ourselves have. So we are taking others with us. And then in the, the third apparition, which we, we commemorate here, which happened in this, this, this spot, he comes again. And this time he brings the chalice with the sacred horse, blood dripping into the chalice. And so we're talking about the mass in essence, the fruit of the mass, which is of course the blessed sacrament. And he also gives to the children the, the blessed sacrament. But the angel, before doing this, he adores. He joins the children and adores with them our Lord present under the, the, the parents of bread and wine. And he offers the presence, the, 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 the suffering humanity of our Lord in reparation. Most Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, I adore you profoundly. I offer you the most precious body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ. Horribly outraged, the blasphemies, the sacrileges, the indifferences, and offering it through the, the most sacred heart of Jesus and the immaculate heart of Mary. So here we already have the, the whole purpose of the Mass, which is essentially the offering of Christ on Calvary, for sinners. These trees, um, olive trees, the holmog trees, when we look at them, look at their, their, their trunks, galled, dug out, they look as if they're dead. Yet when we look at the top of them, we see leaves, green, growing. In a certain way, this represents us. We are very much like those, perhaps spiritually look like those trees you know, that we're half dead. And yet, the life that we've received from Christ in baptism is there. It's just waiting for that moment when our faith becomes fully blown and then we can produce uh, not leaves and fruit. And this is what, in fact, the, the hope that we have. The little faith that we have, we need to nourish continually. We, we think of the man whose, whose son was possessed by a demon and the apostles couldn't cast out the demon. And when the Lord came, there were nine apostles in the valley and they could not cast out the demon. It's only when the Lord came down to the valley with the three others, Peter, James and John, and asked the question, well, what are you arguing about? And the man said, you know, I came to your apostles, my son is possessed, I came to your apostles, they couldn't do anything. And the Lord was very angry um, with his response and said, you won't believe. And the man was desperate. He said, Lord, I do believe, help my unbelief or the little faith that I have, cause it to burst into flame. So a little faith is certainly better than no faith. And all of us, sadly, are of little faith. If we had faith, we could say to the tree, be uprooted. It's not doing anything. Be uprooted, you know, and it would. This is what our Lord tells us. And yet it does, because the, the, little, the little faith that we have has already brought us this far, and it will bring us further. So we thank the angel of peace who came to this place. And we ask our own guardian angels, you know, to bring us peace. You know, and the, the first and the most and foundational peace that we must have is with God. If we're at peace with God, we'll be at peace with ourselves. If we're at peace with ourselves, we'll be at peace with our neighbor. And we can create this oasis of peace around us. For us to do this, of course, it is also requires that we be ready to put up with the difficulties surrounding us, whether the difficulties of the um, surroundings, the environment, or the difficulties of other people. You know, we accept all of this as part of God's way in drawing us closer into the great mystery, which, which is Christ. So let us be grateful for all of us who are present, and when we go back home, all of those who surround us, 
and invariably there will be you know, misunderstandings. But if we accept it uh, in, the, in the right spirit, the spirit of Christ, you know, it will be for us beneficial. It will enable us to grow and we'll be able to put out leaves, even though everything around us is a mess. We put out leaves and we will, in fact, be um, um, able to, to, get, to um, bear the, the fruit that Christ requires of us. And, of course, the great fruit is peace. In honor of our angels, we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our guardian angels, watch over us. Our guardian angels, intercede for us. Our guardian angels, pray for us. Have a Maria.